Hello everyone and welcome back. We're here for round two of the 2023 Huck Central benefiting the Mary Sunshine House. Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, joined again by Joey Anderson, aka Joey Buckets. I'm back. Excited He's back, to be back, folks. Yes. We're ready here for round number two and we're switching up courses. So now we're heading over to the Grand Central Station course. Is that what it's called? Yep, Grand Central Station. And there's two layouts they have here. And we're going to be playing the locomotive layout, the harder of the two. All right. I know you guys were all up on the channel from two years ago. That's when I was last here. We saw both the Freightline layout and the locomotive layout. And as we just heard, we're playing the, the loco. Bowl one, pretty uh, straightforward, isn't it? Pretty straightforward, a little downhill. I do believe there is OB long of the basket. Other than that, there's not much danger. Most players just gonna go putter down the middle. And the round one leader, Aiden Scott. What do you know about this guy? Um, Not a ton. I know he's sponsored by Prodigy and he's pretty quiet and stoic and he's a great player. Yeah, I had the pleasure of meeting him back at Tallahassee and then managed to spell his name wrong uh, on the coverage. So we got that all taken care of, but certainly has game. And here we are with Clint Calvin. Clint taking down the U.S. Am Nationals back in 2018 and then has gone on to become a pro. I know he worked at Morley Field for a number of years, and now we're seeing him out touring around. Yeah, right off the bat, we got two good shots. Both inside circle one, it looks like. And this looks good here from Christian as well. And you called it. There's actually OB deep of the basket that I feel like hit off one of the backstops and then stayed in bounds for him. So he'll still have a look for birdie. Yep. Rounding out the car, we got Dylan here. One time. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Skips <laughs> off and, and he kind of goes long there, but... That was a great yeah, shot. Yeah, calling for it. Almost back-to-back -back opening hole aces here on the coverage this weekend. I'm not going to say you guys disappointed me, but come on. Yeah. Starting off strong here with Aiden. That's a great putt from Circle's Edge, at least. Yeah, very confident. Uh, you know, his putt, I, I don't want to say reminds me of yours, but in a sense, it feels like it's pretty much hyzer. His is a little flatter than yours is, but it's on the pole more often than not. Yeah, I love Aiden's putt. He has kind of like this little twitch hesitation, and then he just launches it. Very spinny. Aiden hails out of Chattanooga, Tennessee area. I was told he's a prodigy, not only a prodigy player, but a prodigy of James Snappy Cole, who is a legend in his own for sure over there. Certainly a great mentor. And Christian, uh, this is the first time I'm really getting to know him. Find out he's a father of two. He's got boys that are three and six and sponsored by Discmania. And he said he found golf around 2014 and sounds like he's going to be making his home back in Georgia. He was in Georgia, moved away, and now he's coming back to Georgia. So excited to meet him for the first time. He's really the only player I haven't covered here before on this card. Yeah, good putt there from Calvin. Yeah, nobody really parked. It's a relatively easy hole. In fact, plays as the second easiest hole of the day, but nobody parked. So we had a couple putts that had to do some work, but still walking away with the, th the uh, birdie too. Yeah, I feel like this hole would play easier if it was in the middle of the course and you're kind of you're getting going. But the ground play here, it, c it can kind of slide. You kind of saw it sliding along there. And most importantly, uh, Dylan walked away with the birdie after <laughs> after hitting Cage because there's nothing worse than taking a par after an ace run. And hole number two, not exactly a walk in the park, is it? No, not at all. There's there's really two ways to play this hole, aggressive or smart, <laughs> as I like to say. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, the smart plays is just kind of play it short. It's basically the same shot as hole one, just a dead straight shot, and then you kind of have a tight tunnel forehand up shot. Yeah, you're playing to the mouth, essentially, and if you're anywhere off the mark, left or right, you're probably going to be stuck with some kind of a, a goofy pitch out or something awkward to try and, you know, get down to the pin. Yeah, I think being a little left is, a, is better than being a little right, but 
I don't think you want to be that far left there. That's going to be trouble over there for sure. As I position back over to the mouth, you're trying to land right in the middle of. I like this shot from Dylan a lot, actually. It, oh, I see a lot of peer players go to the forehand on this tee shot. I think there's like a slight little right to left hillside that likes to keep that skip straighter. Oh, that's going to be the best shot in the group for sure. And even a little roll that keeps them right in the center. So if you're looking for the kind of the premier shot, you want to mimic that one. And Clint has nothing to do except for be able to pitch out into the fairway. Yeah, it's a tough thing to do, but it can save you for sure. Dylan with a great approach there, just parking it. You'll see that disc throughout that is a uh, soft zone that he tells me that. I, in fact, one of his card mates asked during the round and said, what do you keep throwing that's that overstable? And said it's a soft zone. And Aiden tried to manufacture something. You know, he's got a very tight gap and then ultimately tries to put it down on angle, but then it kicks back into the left side, and that's not really going to do much for him. Yeah, I see this a lot. If you leave that forehand low, you leave yourself with a mid-circle two putt, and it's kind of scary because there's a little drop-off behind the basket. So if you get kind of get too aggressive on the putt, it, it can you can find yourself circle's edge coming back up the hill. It feels like those three trees are somewhat guardians as that is pulled inside there for Clint. So doesn't even get down to those trees, but those three trees are kind of, uh, you know, you have to beat those to have yourself a good-looking putt. Yeah, I try not to think about those those <laughs> trees because there's already a pretty tight fairway in front of me, and I'm just hoping I miss them. And Aiden actually hit off of the right side of that little cluster of trees. Meanwhile, Clint pitching up and looking like a bogey five coming for him. Yeah, this is that putt that I was talking about. It's kind of scary. And that's exactly the danger you were just talking about. If you don't connect with anything or if you hit and then roll away, you're going to be faced sometimes with the, uh, an even longer putt coming back. This isn't too long, but still obstructed. Yeah, he makes good, though. Um, yeah, with that first putt, he just was a little scared of maybe fully committing and airballing or skipping off the cage and rolling, like you were saying. So a couple of bogeys. Dylan with the tap-in stress-free birdie. And then, ultimately, Christian's going to tap in for the par. Well, three's a little shorty, right? A little shorty. Um, the easiest hole on the course, you really just hit the gap with anything slightly overstable and give yourself a putt. There's kind of an uphill backstop as well. This is one you kind of feel like you just want to step up and put it close. Yeah, it's 235 slightly uphill, and I feel like you should be able to throw almost half the discs in your bag, if not two-thirds or three-quarters of them, to manufacture a look there. And that goes a little straight for Dylan, but he'll still have a look. And you can't do that. That's trouble. Yeah, you definitely don't want to do that, but he'll... He'll have a chance to get scrambly, try to get his par. Aiden, similar to Dylan there, just a little too straight. You just, I think you just have to give this one a little bit of height to let it fade into that green.
And that's the shot right there. Yeah, you can put it up high and just let gravity do the work. You could put it lower and then get a skip or two to the basket. If you throw it dead straight and just have it fade a little, you could get up there. But we see Christian now in a world of trouble. He had the tiny little gap and just couldn't pierce it. Yeah, he's still got more work to do here. Exactly. I think it's gone from bad to worse over here. Yeah, he'll have a look there, but it's definitely not what he's looking for. Pretty obstructed. Circle two. Also slightly uphill. So even though Dylan threw it dead straight, he still is almost pin high and still has a look at it. Aiden a few feet closer. The putter looks pretty good so far. Yeah, that was a nice stroke there from Aiden. As it called on live coverage when we saw Aiden momentarily at the Champions Cup. Just turned 18. Dylan's somewhere in that neighborhood. You yep. yourself, you're just 19. So uh, a lot of fresh talent. Check out the whole lineup at ClashDisc.com. Of course, big thanks to our friends at Clash for supporting my coverage here this weekend as we head over to four. Yeah, this is a new hole for this tournament. Um, it's, it's a really tough hole. They've cleared out a whole new fairway, really. We're going to hold 17's basket on the freight line, and it's a tight turnover that you need to flex back late at the end. So you need to turn it and you need to fade it to get the birdie. Aiden puts a pretty good move on it. And that's center fairway short, but center fairway. Just for some comparisons out there, Aiden comes into the tournament with a 1,018 rating. Oh, and... Yep. Not yep. that he would have got that much more carry, but that one was pretty much online. Clint comes into the event with a 10-12 rating. Dylan on the card is 10-16. And Dylan going roller there. That's, that's yeah, an interesting Yeah, what do you think of that play? play? Yeah, it's really interesting. Maybe he's just kind of conceding for an easy part or maybe just a long look for birdie. And that is a disastrous kick there. Yeah, he's on this high left side. I wouldn't even call it the fairway, or you know, it's basically the left side of the fairway off of it. Yeah, he catches a little yeah. bit of brush right out of his hand, but gets it right back to the fairway. This hole is coming in as the hardest hole for round two. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I I feel like it's just such a tough one to get all the way to to give yourself a good look and even if you do get somewhat close you're thinking about the undulation you're thinking about the hillside you're thinking about rollaways like there's just so much <laughs> well almost throwing it in from long range yeah doing it's <laughs> giving us a show here early the roller and then the near put in and some Fireworks here on four. That's a good out there by Clint. Just give himself a look. And just think, we're only four holes in, and we've already seen three or four shots where you guys who are all, you know, 10-10 rated and above are just pitching out to a fairway, you know, throwing less than 100 feet, just trying to find a position. I think that speaks to just how difficult the rough can be out on this course. And... 
That was really not an impressive approach there for Christian. So he's got this left for bogey. And he makes good. That's a really, <laughs> really good putt. Really nervy because if, if you don't make it, you, you don't know what's happening on that hillside. Yeah, and that's where I think, as you were just saying, is this being one of the most difficult or the most difficult hole. Even if you put your drive to this spot or where Christian landed, you're still thinking about everything on the screen. And Clint is going to pay for the uh, the short-armed approach and ultimately walk away with the bogey here. Yeah, I even saw some people on this hole just throwing forehand off the tee and just conceding for the par. Wow. Kind of backing up what you were just talking about. Played at 3.63, and out of 93 competitors, three birdies. So I know it's new, and I'm sure it'll get worked in a little bit, but that's that's a very difficult par three. And now we head to one of my favorites. Yeah, this one's fun. We got a little island hole. Very short downhill. There are two trees. The gap is pretty big, though, and... I mean, it's a beautiful green. If you're on the island, you just want to make your putt. The island's probably only 25 feet wide of the basket. Yeah, this is kind of a two or a four hole, right? Because if you're on the island, you're probably making the putt. Yeah, if you if you don't make the island, which Aiden does here, then you go to the drop zone, which is probably 45, 50 feet short, which can also kind of get away from you if you don't catch any metal and that's oh. a good sit there yeah it checks up you see the white painted line there that's what uh determines if you're in bounds or not so it's not necessarily just the wood chips or the rocks it's the line on the actual rocks i love that they've clarified it and even though it's a putter it comes in a little too Firm there for Clint. Christian also just juiced it there. <laughs> he says committed. <laughs> you and I were thinking the same word, juiced. <laughs> oh, yeah. He started walking that one in early. He knew it. So that's quite a rare par. I feel like if you do see a par here, it's probably because you missed from on the island, not necessarily make from the drop zone. Mm. A little short there from Christian. And you see that he has come within a few feet of the inbound, so he'll be able to take up to one meter. Even if that brings you closer to the basket, you are allowed that one meter relief. So he'll take advantage. Yeah, I really enjoy this hole because it makes you throw kind of like a touchy shot. Can't just kind of rip it through the gap and hope it sits because it's it's not going to sit on that mulch green. So we're 43%, 46% of the field had birdies, and 34% had bogeys or worse. Yeah, So uh, very yeah. balanced <laughs> hole there. Very much so. Only a couple pars in between as we head over to six. Yeah, hole six, you got to get it through this gap and push it straight with a late fade. It's only 250-ish. Um, there is OB long and right. But other than that, it's a pretty straightforward hole. Just a bit deep, but not a problem. Certainly within range. I really like that there from Dylan. Just hitting the gap, not worrying about like fading it too hard. You can almost just throw a straight disc and have the natural fade of the disc at the end kind of 
filter you to the basket. Yeah, I feel like whatever you did back actually on hole number three is kind of what you could probably throw here. Three was shorter but uphill. So you're putting about the same amount of power into it because this is flat. Oh, and that is hung out too wide to the right, so he gets hung up. But yeah, very basic shot if you're a righty backhand thrower. Oof. And it just feels like, <laughs> although we're seeing Christian struggle a little bit, he's not off by much. We've seen a few of those opportunities, and things aren't going his way at the moment. Nice pick up there for Aiden. Good birdie for Clint after going just deep. Yeah, you could tell he's kind of feeling it. He's He's breathing and focusing in. And Dylan from short range, no problem at all. So, fortunately for Christian, he's going to be left out of the birdie party. And we head back over a bridge over to the T of seven. Yeah, hole seven. This is where the whole kind of where the whole course kind of starts to get hard. I think this hole, there's the Obi Creek on the left, there's woods on the right. The good mistake to make is two straight or right because you don't want to go B. And the green is really tight. So, I mean, 20 to 25 feet left, short and long, all OB. So, backhand flex plays very nicely on this hole. Just on a rope. Yeah, that's a great shot from Aiden. To check up just about pin high. And this is where the danger comes in, but he gets through. Yeah, somehow it filters through and he stays up on the platform. I would say, I'm not sure he even knows uh, just how much that filtered through, so he'll take it. And you kind of just spoke of a flex, and that's where the angle that we were seeing Clint put on this just didn't have enough room for it to kind of flex <laughs> back at the end. But still, like you said, too straight or to the right, perfectly safe spot to be. Yep, and you can still kind of give that a little run, a little safe bid, and not be in too much danger. No, come on. Yeah, that's just kicked from bad to worse all the way to the other side of the fairway and down into the ravine. Yeah, that's rough. Because he's like now very short OB. And he, he didn't even get like a good spot way up there because it was so short and left. And now he has to throw over OB. Yeah, up and over blindly and good touch Yeah. in order to be able to put himself there for a look at saving bogey. But And at this point, my heart is almost breaking. It just like feels like nothing's going right for him. Oh. Dang, long range. That's a scary putt to run that hard. Yeah. But he makes good from mid-circle two. Yeah, and then Dylan with a good-looking angle at it. He capitalizes on the birdie look. And then closest to the pin here is Aiden. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's he thinks he got away with it there on that right side. I watched it a couple of times, and, yeah, it wasn't too bad, but he uh, he wasn't convinced that it should have stayed. I don't see him arguing with it, though, either. So, yeah, the rest of the card is going to pick up birdies. Meanwhile, Christian's going to take the bogey, and uh, we're going to head over to hole eight. Things are just moving right along, too, in terms of the pace on this card. Yeah, hole eight is a doozy it's a really tough par five it goes uphill winding through the tight wooded fairway and then it finishes with this late tunnel that just is just endless and then <laughs> the green is just super exposed so it's like you're playing in the woods the whole way and then it's just a wide open green 
and I was going to say the tee shot's demanding, which it is, but I feel like every shot on this hole is demanding. Yeah, every shot definitely is demanding. Even though it doesn't demand you to throw really far, the fairway is so tight and the rough is so bad. If you get in the rough left or right, you're, you're going to be struggling for par. And that is one of the best drives I've seen from from Dylan there. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Putting it all the way up there, keeping it in the fairway, and then getting so much distance on that turn. Uh, later he was asked what that was, and apparently that was a force, which to me flies like how I would throw uh, an Avenger SS maybe if I'm lucky. So I'm guessing it's a pretty beat force at that. And he's got plenty of power, but... Everybody here on lead card going backhand. I, everybody on my card went forehand and just kind of played short okay. of this little hill that you see here. And that's that's kind of interesting because the forehand is kind of a little safer and you can still get birdie with the forehand off the tee. But Yeah, you just have to bite off maybe more on that second shot. Uh, yeah, that is interesting. I was going to say, do you feel like backhand is just simply more aggressive or is it just maybe what all these guys were comfortable with? It could be either. I feel like Dylan was going for the aggressive line and also Aiden. And yeah, then, so it's, it's like you throw up the hill and then you have like a little just pitch hyzer around the corner. But... Dylan actually got, <laughs> like, he, he's so far up here that he can go aggressive second shot, which, that's just incredible. Yeah, and then he keeps that one in the fairway as well. I mean, clearly, you have a big tee shot, you're in really good position, maybe better than ever before, and then you still have to execute on your second, and he made that one also look easy. That's a really nice shot there from Christian getting all the way out, giving himself a long look. Yeah, that's his third, so he does have an opportunity still for birdie. There's a couple of roots and a little bit of a run-up issue there for... Clint. Yeah, and maybe that got to him, but he gets Thank a you. really fortunate kick. Yeah, it, uh, I don't think kicks get much better on such a corridored, you know, tight wooded hole. The way that just kind of caromed off the tree and then kicked him right back into the fairway. And that's friendly? Well, okay, maybe the rollback's not. But the fact that he hit a tree that, you know, 25 feet up in the air. And then it almost sat down still in the center of the fairway is actually pretty impressive as well. Yeah, he kind of curled up to the left side of the fairway there, but I'm sure he'll have like a lean out forehand. Man, Dylan just made this hole look so <laughs> easy. I was going to say, if you're going to do a, a textbook or a flyover, just do what uh, Dylan did here. Good upshot from Aiden there. Clint's able to give it a long look for birdie, but par likely coming. It's also a long look for birdie. Trying to still get on the board. As these guys start tapping out on eight, I'm thinking still back to my favorite hole, the little the little guy on five. Let me know in the comments what you're throwing on hole five, onto that little island. We saw a couple different approaches there, but I want to know what you guys are throwing on five. Put that in the comments. Do all the YouTube things, like, share, subscribe, you know, all that stuff. I'm trying to get to 100,000 people. I need your help, especially if you're new here. And then, of course, you guys know, and I'm already giving away jerky week in and week out. In fact, I just got a whole new box sent to my house, so that gets shared with all of you. 
Pretty impressive what we've seen so far, though, especially Dylan, who just is uh, on fire, making it look easy, heading into nine, the last one on the front. Yeah, hole nine. It's right in front of you, but there are a lot of trees in the way. The gap is super, super tight, and the fairway is just filled with pine straws. So even when you throw it good, you find yourself 30 feet deep. And if you throw it an inch off of good, then you could be scrambling or everything in between. Like you see there from Dylan, that was a foot right, and who knows what he has over there. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty tough kick off to that left side. That also kicks left, but not quite as bad. Now, I when I was here two years ago, were we playing this hole, or is this kind of a newer hole, too, that you know of? Yeah, so two years ago, we were playing this hole. We were, okay. Yeah, there were only a few changes, and there's a few more coming, just some T-pad switches here and there, and hole four, but other than that, not a ton of changes to the course. Oh, and that was going to carry right back to the pin there. Instead, it gets hung up at the last moment. And here's another one of those scenarios where, you know, you're just, I mean, he at least can see the basket. And he's just trying to get up and down and save the par. But this is a putt that he has to go with just because he's trying to hit this little gap and has less than 100 feet to the pin. And he was looking down the low gap, and now I think he's going to take it a little bit higher. That'll work just fine. A 200-footer is not supposed to give you this much trouble, is it? <laughs> no. No, the, the trees are just everywhere off the fairway. If you don't hit that gap and give yourself a putt, it, it can be super tough to save your par. Dylan's got enough room for a little jump putt, a little step through. Oof, that was a good run there. Looking to get on the board. Man, all of his misses have just been low. It could it could be a nerves thing. Like, I, I find that's true to, for me, is my putting stroke feels fine. I'm just a little nervous, a little low, uncommitted. So hole nine only averaged 2.89. And I was not expecting this. Yeah, very uncharacteristic there. And he's he's got at least the same distance. I mean, he's going to have to collect himself. Which he does. Yeah, and puts that one right on the pole. But it yeah, it was just unbelievable for a moment. Like, what did what just happened here? Who's you know he's been putting so well and looked so good here in the front nine, and then a complete whiff here on the on the green with no obstruction. It was. Kind of mind-blowing. So, Joey, I appreciate you joining me, and that's what we're looking at through the front nine of round number two. We're exactly halfway through the tournament. Like, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the back nine. How's that sound, Joey? Sounds great. See you guys there.